Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So I've been shooting with this A7S III for a little while now. I really love this camera. And you may be using a similar camera because you can get such great video out of it. I'm talking about 10-bit color with 422 color sampling in the camera, which is just amazing. But you may have found that these files can be difficult for computers to play back. Even a relatively new computer uh. can struggle with these, especially what? something like 60 frames per second in HEVC, which creates nice small file sizes, but very difficult for the computer to play back. So you're gonna to need to use proxies. The thing is, rather than generate those proxies in Final Cut Pro, you can have the camera do it. You can set them up to create proxies at the same time you're shooting, so there's no need to generate them after the fact. The only thing about that is the workflow for working with those proxies and switching between proxies in Original and Final Cut Pro can be a little bit confusing. So I thought I'd take this MacBreak Studio to show you a couple of different workflow scenarios for working with camera-generated proxies in Final Cut Pro 10. Let's dive in. Okay, I've shot some footage with my camera set to record proxies as well as original media. I've inserted my card, which is this window right here. You can see the path name at the bottom. And the original clips are located in this clip folder within this folder structure. Now, every camera is maybe a little bit different, but generally uh, you're gonna find them in a clip folder. And if you scroll down, there'll be a subfolder which contains the proxy files. You can see I've also added labels on a couple of clips I've selected to work with. If you try to quick loop these files by hitting the spacebar, you'll find you can't open them because they're 10-bit 422 files. But if you double click on them, you can open in QuickTime Player even though you get a warning here. And if you do Command-I to get info, you'll see 10-bit, in this case, this is a 60 frame per second clip at a data rate of 200 megabits per second. And it gives you a way to inspect these clips before bringing them into Final Cut by using the QuickTime Player. I have clips in different frame rates here in 2398, in 5994, and I've got one at 120 frames per second. And the reason I did that, and the reason it has this yellow tag associated with it as well, if I open that up, you can see this is at 120 frames per second here, is that this one won't have a proxy representation for it. Uh, with the Sony A7S III, you can create proxies for most frame rates, but up to 60. You can't do it for 120 frames per second. So I wanna show you how you deal with that. Okay, my next point is how to bring this media into Final Cut. Now normally I would always recommend that you import directly from the camera card. And the reason for doing that is to retain the camera card structure and all the associated metadata. You can see each of these files, the original camera files, have these XML sidecar files that include metadata about each file. In this case, when you're doing a proxy workflow, in either of these two workflows I'm gonna describe here, it's better to copy your media to a location that you wanna import from first. And the reason for that is you actually want to lose some of the metadata. In particular, the original files here with that metadata have timecode associated with them at the start and end. But the subfiles, the proxy files down here, notice there's no XML file for those. The time code for those will all start at zero, but the time code for my other clips will not start at zero, and that will get in the way when we want to relink media. By copying these files first to target drives, each of them will have time code that starts at zero, and we won't have a relinking issue. So that's kind of point number one here. Point number two to help with the relinking is you'll notice that the proxy files don't have exactly the same file name. So for example, this one here, let's look in the originals, is uh, starts ends with 253, and this one ends with 253S03. So in order for the relinking to work properly, we need to remove this S03. Luckily, it's very easy to do. I can select all these and choose File, Rename, and I've chosen in the Rename command here to replace text. I typed in S03 and replace with nothing. So if I click Rename, that just removes SO3 and now our file names match perfectly. You'll notice I, I've copied my proxies to my desktop because let's say I just wanna take my laptop with me to work on these proxies and I've copied the original media to my RAID. Where you copy really depends on where you wanna edit from but the idea would be to copy the files to the location from which you wanna edit. Now I'm gonna describe two different workflow scenarios. 
The first one I call a faux proxy workflow. And the reason I call it a faux proxy workflow is Final Cut Pro is not gonna know we're working with proxies. This workflow is meant for somebody who's in a big hurry and you're in such a hurry, you don't even have time to copy the original files from the card. So in this workflow, you've got your card, you insert it like we have here and you just copy the proxies. They're obviously gonna copy much faster. Let's say you have a lot of them because they're much smaller than the originals, but that's all you do. Later on, you're gonna copy the originals or you have an assistant copy the originals, but you've gotta go. You need to grab those off the camera and you've gotta catch a flight and you wanna edit with the proxies and you don't care about the originals right now at all. So this is scenario one, faux proxy workflow. Step one is to copy the proxies to the location you wanna edit from. So a portable drive, whatever. Step two is to rename the proxies by removing any extension so they'll match the originals. We've done step one and step two already. Step three is to import those proxies into Final Cut. So I'm gonna to jump to Final Cut here. I've got a library open and I've got an event called Faux Proxy Workflow. I'm gonna import just those proxies. I'll import them as leave in place since they're on my laptop itself right now, or let's say they're on a portable drive I'm taking with me. And now I've got them and I can begin working with them. Step four is to create a new project but you need to be a little careful about this. You don't want automatic settings. Since these proxy files are smaller, we wanna use manual settings that match our final delivery. So I'll call this faux proxy workflow, and I'm setting it up at 4K uh, 2398. That's my working delivery, not the resolution of these proxies. If I select each of these, you can see that they're 1280 by 720. Now I call this a faux proxy workflow because Final Cut doesn't know that they're proxies. If we go to the view pop-up menu, you see we're working with optimized or original media. Final Cut has no idea these are proxies, so, but I can work with them. I'll select them. I can add a LUT to them. I can edit them into my project, trim them, reorganize them, whatever. So let's say I'm now finished with my project. I've fully edited it, I've done color correction, titles, anything, and I'm now in a location where the original clips are available. I've copied them to hard drive. So my last step before exporting is to connect to those original files instead of these proxies. So in this workflow, I'm gonna select the event, file, relink files, original media. Remember, Final Cut doesn't know we're working with proxies, and then if I had missing selected here, it usually is by default, you won't see anything because we want to reconnect all these clips. Nothing is missing here. And then when we locate them, we want to navigate not to the proxies, but to wherever you've stored your original files. And you can see here it's found all of those clips. Now, we weren't able to work with this 120 frame per second clip because we didn't get camera generated proxies from it. So in this scenario one, you just don't want to shoot at 120 frames per second if you can use this super fast faux proxy workflow. I'll click choose. I'll click relink files. And we're done. If I select each file, you'll see it's now 3840 by 2160. And I can do the same thing in the timeline. And you'll see we now are working with the full resolution clips. And we can now finish and export our project. So that's scenario number one. For scenario number two, I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna select all these clips and delete them. I'm also gonna delete the main project. And I'll select this other event, Real Proxy Workflow. Let's jump back to the Finder. So in Real Proxy Workflow, which is my recommended workflow, the first step is to copy both the proxies and the originals to their target hard drives. So if you have the time to do that, I'd recommend doing that because it gives you more flexibility down the road. So step one is to copy both the proxies and the originals to the target hard drives. Step two is to rename the proxy files to match the originals. We've already done that. Step three is to import the originals into Final Cut Pro. Not the proxies, but the original files. So we'll go to Final Cut, Command I to import. Locate our original files. We're gonna leave them in place and import selected. Now that we have the originals imported, we're gonna to switch to proxies. So this is the real proxy workflow. From the view pop-up menu, I'm gonna to switch to proxies. Everything goes offline because we haven't linked to those proxies yet. Normally, if you don't have camera generated proxies, you generate them in Final Cut Pro. 
We don't need to do that because we already have them. So I'll choose File, Relink Files, Proxy Media. I'm going to relink to those camera generated proxy files. You can choose Missing here if you want to. I'll choose Locate All. I'll navigate to those proxy files. And notice it says four of the five files are found. Remember, one of those original files was 120 frames per second and doesn't have a proxy representation. I'll click Choose. I'll click Relink. And all the files that have proxy representations are now relinked to those proxies, as we can see over here in the inspector. For the one that doesn't have a proxy representation, we can create that now. So I'll select it and choose File, Transcode Media, Proxy Media, and I'm going to use H.264 at 50%, and I'll let it run. And I'll bring up the progress bar. So this is the step that we're saving by using camera-generated proxies. You don't need to wait for this process to happen since you already have the proxies that were generated when you were shooting. So one nice thing about this workflow is you can work with clips that didn't have proxies. The second thing is when you create a new project, you can now use automatic settings because Final Cut knows these are proxies and will create the project at the correct frame rate and resolution. So once again, I can select all these clips and apply LUT. Edit them into my timeline, trim them, rearrange them, whatever you need to do. Let's say I'm now done editing with my real proxies. All I need to do at this point is to switch back to originals. Optimize original and I'm set to go. I now have the original clips. If you look in the inspector, the proxy tag is gone there. So with this workflow, I'm free at any point to switch between proxies or original. Finally, I want to mention one more thing that could be useful. These camera generated proxies live in a different location than the one that I generated inside Final Cut. The camera generated proxies I copied to a specific location in a folder on my desktop. This Final Cut generated proxy will live wherever I targeted for my library. So if I select the library, we can see that the storage location for media is in a library, which is where that, those proxy files are, or in this case, a single proxy file. If you wanted to take this project on the road, you could create a proxy-only library out of it very easily. So what you would do is create a new library, and I'll call it proxy-only. And then you would just drag your project into that proxy-only library. In the dialog that comes up, we want to include the media, but we just want proxy media. What's great about this workflow, if you've included other things in your project like music or audio only files or graphics, they will be included as well. Not just the proxy media, but any media that doesn't support transcoding, which means graphics and audio or files with an alpha channel will be included as well. And I like to keep copying media stored in external locations as well so it all gets copied. So by doing that, I'll click OK. We now have a proxy only version of that library with all the media that was in the project. And now I can take this proxy only library anywhere with me. It's completely self-contained with the proxy media. And then when I come back to my office, I can drag my edited timeline back into my original library and switch back to original media. So there you go, a couple of scenarios. How about you? What's your workflow? Leave us a comment below and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.